Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for joining me. We are continuing to read the Bible live every single day. We are up to the third chapter of the book of Hebrews. And uh, we're going to be reading that right now after we pray. And uh, you can join me every morning live here uh, to watch uh, the, 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 the Bible readings every single day. And it's my goal to uh, read the word of our creator every single day because it is the most important thing in our lives. It is what our creator left us with. So here we are this morning reading Hebrews 3. If you're watching on the replay, no different. You could put your comments below the video. But if you all watch it live, uh, there is, uh, uh, there is a, a chat box next to the video you can watch as well. Uh, so let's continue here with the opening up in Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. And that is the Shema. Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. Baruch Shem Kavo, Mahutov, Leolam Vaed. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim, Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you arise uh, and speak of them in your house when you uh, when you walk by the way when you retire and when you arise and you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand and let them be frontless between your eyes and you shall write them on a doorpost of your house and upon your gates all right hallelujah we are going to be reading hebrews 3 this morning and uh, as we just read that prayer uh, so many people out there think they love i'll say god and maybe they love a god but uh i love the god of the bible and i am human i am a sinner and i struggle with a lot of things but repentance means to to pray to turn and to make an effort to turn and not enjoy the practice of sin but to turn against it and uh, without Yeshua, that cannot be done. Without a helper, that cannot be done. And, and, and that's just the bottom line. We can't do it under our own power because under our own power, we are sinners. We need something higher. And in the uh, original covenant, we see the, the sacrificial system and the Levitical priesthood uh, attempted to do just that, to redeem and take away the sin of man but that couldn't be done we needed something better we needed something higher and in uh, the first two chapters of hebrews we first see that yeshua uh, was above the angels but placed himself below the angels uh, to be on our level we also see that he was above the prophets and now we look at the greatest prophet moses and we see Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, uh, being even greater than Moses. Now, what is the significance of, of the angels and the prophets and then Moses? Why the focus on Moses versus he already said all the prophets, the writer. He already said all the angels. So why did I have to clarify Moses? Why? Because we have to remember who this book was written to. This book was written to, uh, <clears throat> this book was written to uh, the Hebrews the Messianic Jewish people, the Jewish believers of Yeshua at that time who were coming under a lot of oppression. And, uh, and, and, and it's significant for all of us because uh, just like all the other books of the Bible, it all points to our Messiah Yeshua. And uh, we're going to read this here, but remember who it was written to. I have two translations this morning. I have the, I have the Hebraic Roots Bible, which you can get at uh, www.coyhwh.com and then I have the New Living Testament. So, verse 3, it says, For this reason, holy brothers, uh, called by a, a call from heaven, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Messiah Yeshua. Now, uh, let's look at uh, 
these, these, this first verse here of chapter 3 in the New Living Testament says, And so, dear brothers and sisters who belong to Yahweh and are partners with those who called to heaven, think carefully about this uh, Yeshua, whom we declare to be Yahweh's messenger and high priest. So this is it's a little bit clear in the, when it says his messenger and high priest, but the notes here when it says for this reason, holy brothers are called by a call from heaven. It says the Aramaic word is gara, which comes from the root word vikara, which is the name of the book of Leviticus. Paul is making a wordplay on it, or, or whoever the author is. The, this author assumes that Paul is making a wordplay on a changing of the Levitical priesthood to Melchizedek. You got that? That's why it's so important to read a scriptures like the One New Man Bible or the Hebraic Roots Bible or even the New Living Testament by in Aramaic by Andrew Gabriel Roth because it pulls this out. So when we read this in, in the New Living Testament and other standard Christian versions, and so dear brothers and sisters, uh, who belong to Yahweh as a uh, as partners with those who are called to heaven. <clears throat> uh, it, nowhere does it talk about the priesthood and the Levitical priesthood and 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 shows uh, Yeshua being our high priest. And also, when we remember who this book was written to, I mean, the Levitical priesthood was 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 everything to them. That was the highest government in order there. But here, Paul is writing, uh, exp expressing this. Uh, and then, and and if we continue here, it says, uh, "Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession in Messiah Yeshua." And but the New Living Testament says, "Think carefully about this Yeshua, whom we declare to be Yahweh's messenger and high priest." So, uh, the note here is Paul uses the Aramaic word kumura instead of Cohen for priest showing that Yeshua was the high priest of Melchizedek, not Levi, or the system of Levi. A large portion of this uh, uh, apostle is to show the change of the priesthood. So they're not doing away with one per se. They're showing the change of it or the adding to it and, and, and the significant the difference between the man-made priesthood and the heavenly priesthood of Yahweh. And we see that. Remember, Yahweh himself ordained the Levitical priesthood. So he wouldn't wipe everything out that he created. You know, he's just giving people, uh, making the yoke easy for them. And we talk about the rest he gives people towards the end of this chapter. And that's what he's speaking of. They had to work under the Levitical priesthood. And there's still a work and obedience in this uh, covenant with Yeshua. But Yeshua gives us that rest. In other words, the yoke of the Levitical priesthood was heavy. The yoke of Yeshua is light and easy because he is our helper. He is our comforter and he helps us overcome. So uh, as we continue reading here, uh, it says, uh, apostle and high priest of our confession, Messiah Yeshua, hallelujah. Verse two, being faithful to him whom appointed him, as also Moses was faithful to his house. So now he's comparing him to Moses. Verse 2 here says, For he was faithful to Yahweh, whom appointed him, just as Moses served faithfully when he entrusted uh, Yahweh's entire house. So when they talk about Yahweh's entire house, they're not talking about the house of Moses. They're talking about the house of Yahweh here. The note here says, both Moses and Yeshua were mediators, deliverers, intercessors, and prophets who got direct revelation from Yahweh without an intermarry. And verse 3, uh, for he was counted worthy of more glory than Moses by so much as the one having built the house has more honor than the house. And the note here is, Paul is showing, or whoever the writer is, and again, this translator assumes it's Paul, is showing the superiority of the Melchizedek order to the Levitical one. Uh, the note here in the New, New Living Testament says, but Yeshua, and it says Jesus, but I say Yeshua because that's his name, deserved far more glory than Moses, just as a person who built a house deserves more praise 
than the house itself. And I'll continue reading verse 4 in the New Living Testament. It says, For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All righty. And, uh, and I'm not even going to read the notes in the New Living Testament at this moment. I'll read one later I like, but most of them just tear this up and they don't understand uh, Torah, the original covenant, and the Jewish people that this book was being written to. Uh, but as we continue here, uh, verse 4, for, ev uh, for every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is Yahweh. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. So this is signifying here, uh, there, there are things built by humans and there's things built by Yahweh. And even though the Levitical priesthood was ordained by Yahweh, it was still a human priesthood where Yeshua was a spiritual priesthood. Uh, and, and so much higher on every level. Verse 5, And Moses, as a servant, was faithful in all his house, for a testimony of things having been spoken. So it talks about the wonderful job Moses has done and, and who he was and, and just such, uh, known as Israel's greatest prophet until now. Uh, it says Moses was in the New Living Testament was cer certainly faithful, in Yahweh's house as a servant, he worked as an uh, illustration of tr uh, truths. Yahweh will reveal later. In verse 6, but Yeshua, the, uh, as the son, is in charge of Yahweh's entire house. And we are, are Yahweh's house if we keep courage and remain confident in our hope in Yeshua. Hallelujah. So, uh, so we look here in verse 5. Uh, it says in the, in the Hebraic root scriptures, which I like much better. It says, and Moses as a servant was faithful in all his house for a testimonial of the things having been spoken. But Messiah as son over his house, whom we are, if truly we hold fast to the boldness and rejoicing the hope firm to the end. And the note here is in verse 3, uh, it, it, it talks John, second, uh, John 2, 18 to 21, that talks about this. But, Moses, but Messiah as son over his own house, whose house we are, if truly we hold fast to boldness and rejoicing. So it's the same thing, having a faith in Yeshua Messiah. Because of this, even as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts to provoke him. As the murmurers did in the day of temptation in the wilderness. And that talks about the 40 years in the desert. Uh, there where your fathers tempted me, even though they saw my works for 40 years. Because of this, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart. And they did not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. And, and, and you can see the notes of that in Psalms 95, 7 to 11. Uh, Jude, uh, Jude 5, Exodus 16, 2 to 8, and 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 12. Beware therefore, my brothers. Least there be in any of you an evil heart which does not belong, believe, and you will be cut off from the living Elohim. But search your heart each day in, uh, until the day which is called the day, uh, that not any one of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. By the deceitfulness of sin. And uh, it says here, Practicing sin without repentance will lead to the hardening of the heart and quenching of the Holy Spirit or the Rahadah Kodesh. And that is uh, the issue we have here. Sin is living in disobedience. The system of Christianity today is teaching people to do just that. They're teaching people that uh, faith in Yeshua and obedience are two separate things. They're teaching people for the most part. Uh, that uh, if you have faith in Yeshua, you don't need to, 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 to know what to do. They falsely claim that the, the, the Rahadah Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, will guide you to live 
according to the will of our creator. But the application of that is you're taking uh, the very instructions and will of our creator out of the scenario when you say that. And uh, you need both parts of it. Uh, and, and so you need faith in Yeshua Messiah, understanding that he's the, the highest of the highs. And, 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 and you need, and if you believe that, you're going to have a desire to follow the words of our creator. Verse 14, for we have become partakers of Messiah, if truly from the beginning to the very end we held steadfast uh, to this true covenant. As in the saying, today, if you hear even the, the uh, echoes of his voice, do not harden your hearts to anger him. Who were those who heard and provoked him? Was it not those who came out of Egypt through Moses, although, uh, although not all of them? But with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with the ones sinning? whose bones lay in the wilderness and whom did he answer uh, and whom did he swear they would not enter into his rest except those not obeying him. So we see that they were not able to enter in because of unbelief. And the note here, which is an excellent note says, uh, obedience is the evidence of faith. And both are needed to enter Yahweh's kingdom. They go hand in hand and don't contradict each other. And then uh, uh, talking about the rest, I want to just mention uh, here. It says here. Uh, in, in, in a note about rest, let's see. It says Yahweh's rest has several meanings in scripture. The seventh day of creation uh, and the weekly Sabbath, uh, commentating uh, it, and it talks about that. Number two, the promised land of Canaan. And then number three, peace with Yahweh. Now, because of our relationship with Yeshua through faith. And number four, our future eternal life with Yeshua. All of these meanings were uh, probably probably familiar to uh, the Jewish believers, uh, readers of Hebrew. We can apply these verses as the warning about Yahweh's anger in the face of human rebellion, uh, re rebellion against the kingdom by rejecting Yahweh's provision, uh, which is Yeshua, and not enduring our faith. We miss the opportunity for spiritual rest. So, so we need to believe and trust in Yahweh for who he is and, and who our creator said he would be. And, and, and that's what we're desiring. So uh, this chapter, verse 3 here of Hebrews, uh, speaks about mostly the, 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 the changing of not just Yeshua being better than Moses, but Yeshua being the priest through Melchizedek, which we're going to talk about more in, uh, in, in, this, in this book. And uh, it's a significant thing because he is the one that could help us to overcome our sin if we so desire. But if we continue to live in disobedience, his help is void. He's there wanting to help us. He's given us the Hadah Kodesh. Uh, but we need to, to be, uh, follow scripture uh, and, and, and follow the words of our creator. And remember that Yeshua didn't say uh, it's okay to, to live in sin. Yeshua said, I'm going to come help you to not live in sin. I'm going to teach you the way, the truth, and the life, and I'm going to help you through my grace and mercy if that's so you desire to learn and follow me. But those of you that want to make a practice of disobedience, do not love me, you do not believe in me, and get away from me. Uh, this is what scripture is. Uh, but the, the prominence that the writer of, of this book is putting uh, to the, the Jewish believers is uh, to stay faithful uh, uh, to the instructions that were given in the Torah that they were using as their scriptures at that time. Uh, but on the same hand, understand, as important as Moses was and as, as important as the Levites were, it all rests on the shoulders of Yeshua, our wonderful Messiah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, and in chapter 4, we'll get more into the rest of Yahweh's people and we'll discuss that more closely. 
All right, everybody. So thank you. Let's close with the ironic benediction this morning. Uh, and that could be found in Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 6, 24 to 26. Yurifka Yahweh, me riska rika ka, yoer Yahweh, panana la ka, vokanika, yo si Yahweh, panana la ka, yo sem aka shalom. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his contents upon you and give you peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Have a blessed day, everybody, and shalom, shalom.